Good afternoon. My name is Tim Markle. I'm director of the Southern Regional Center for Children and Youth with Special Health Care Needs. We cover 14 counties in southern and southwest Wisconsin, helping parents and those people that help parents uh, try to make the system a little bit better, find the resources that they need and the information that they need. Um, today, we're having conversations on showing up for kids, and we are very excited to welcome Claire Lutkin, who's the executive director of Acliff Therapy Camp. Before we get started in the conversation, I do want to remind you um, that if you are on this call, the call is being recorded. And as we know, anything that is recorded is on the internet forever. Please watch what you say and try not to use any uh, personal identifiable health information. We'd also like to remind you that uh, this is not dispensing any sort of medical advice, legal advice, therapeutic advice, or educational advice. We are strictly having a conversation, and we hope you can join us in that conversation, or at least enjoy the conversation afterwards and get it posted on the internet. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guest today after I am... There we go. Just in case anybody shows up, I just disabled the waiting room so they can pop right in. Um, so that could be exciting. Ooh, I don't know who's going to pop in. <laughs> great. This is great. But in the meantime, let's go with Claire is the executive director of Baycliff Therapy Camp. We also have Sandy Kiernyarn. Sandy is a mother, and she can introduce herself a little later as well if she would like to, to explain why she would be here, because uh, she knows a lot more about the therapy camp than I know about Baycliff Camp. And then Claire, of course, knows everything about Baycliff Camp. Everything. <laughs> everything. Even, <laughs> how, even how to run the backup generator. That's okay, right. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't know how to run the backup generator. So just minutes before the call started, Baycliff did lose all their power. So we're very grateful that Claire has a cell phone and a network and is able to join us today. So Claire, feel free to introduce yourself, anything you want to say about yourself. Um, but then explain to people that don't understand exactly what is Baycliff. This is a little different than a week-long fun type summer camp. It's a rather unique place I found out. So can you tell us a little bit about the uniqueness of Facebook? So, um, you know, first of all, you know, Tim, just thank you so much for inviting me to be part of the conversation. Um, you know, I always embrace any opportunity to talk about things that we can do to make sure that we're providing kids and families with the support that they need. Um, and obviously doing that regardless of how challenging your circumstances may be, um, whether you have power or not, whether you can have physical camp or not, um, it's important, you know, kind of along with the title of, of, of this opportunity that we do always show up for kids regardless of the circumstances. So thank you for the opportunity. Baycliff is, pretty unique in that, um, one, we are a therapy camp, and so we're providing service and support for children that are living with um, some degree of physical disability, and they are nearly without exception are receiving supporting services outside of our program, and because our goal is to make sure that by attending Baycliff, you will have some sort of therapeutic benefit. But aside from that, we are a camp and we are a seven week long residential camp, 49 straight days. Um, you know, Sandy can talk about the challenges of dropping off your child and not seeing them again for 49 straight days. Yeah. Um, and you know, the idea that parents trust us to enough to give us their kids for that long is is really something that is is very impactful on our end so in tandem to these therapy services that they're receiving and we provide physical and occupational therapy speech and hearing support and um, vision instruction and so there are all these traditional camp things going on. Kids are kayaking, kids are hiking, kids are making s'mores, kids are going on overnight campouts in tents. Um, you know, they're fighting black flies, they're avoiding the sunshine and the heat, and they're running inside when it rains. And so we are 
very unique in that, you know, we have this therapy programming, which is very individualized for the child, but it's embedded in these just kind of rites of passage of going to summer camp for the summer and spending time with your friends in community learning with others. And I think that is the power of Baycliffe, not only for the children we serve, but for the adults that serve them. Love it. That is a very unique setting. Now, Sandy, did you want to, um, you know, give us a little bit of the parent perspective, maybe how you found Baycliffe and what is it like to, uh, let's see, drive what, about 12 hours from Edison. Um, it's right near Canada, if I remember right. Um, but drive all that way and say goodbye. For, for seven weeks. What is that experience like as a parent? So my daughter is now 14. She started going when she was nine. Um, so, you know, kind of developmentally, I think she was feeling ready. She had done another week-long camp previously, but it was a camp that her brother, who was typically developing, was also at. And so he was in the boys' dorms and she was in the girls. So they had each other. And ironically, he was the one who was more nervous about going to camp than she was at that time. <laughs> so we had a little bit of a trial run. And I think that helped us feel more confident. Um, we also knew another family that had, that their daughter had been going for several years, and so it was highly recommended. Um, and then also, ironically, when our daughter was too young to probably even go to camp, someone had told my husband about it. He kind of forgotten about it, but kept it somewhere in the back of his head. So we had heard from a couple of different sources about Baycliffe. So I think those things all helped. Also, there's a, um, a weekend, my daughter has cerebral palsy, and there's a weekend in April where families who are considering Baycliffe can um, come up for a weekend. Um, and I think that is that weekend is specific to families whose children have cerebral palsy. So it was really nice to see the camp for ourselves, to meet some of the staff, to get a chance to talk with them, meet some other families. Um, my daughter made a friend there that's still a friend. You know, they still text when camp's not in session and things like that, and they love to see each other every time. So we had a lot of things that helped us transition better. And one of the most important things I think that we were told in one of the sessions was, um, it is normal for kids to be homesick. That is a normal response for kids in any camp environment, whether that child has any sort of special need or disability or not. So just sort of understanding that going in was very helpful. Um, it made that much easier. And it's, what's been fun is, you know, that first year of camp it was all new to us. But as we go back, it's always amazes me. Even when we picked her up the, you know, at the end of the seven weeks, is all the staff knew her name, every last person. And I would guess the vast majority of the kids too. And there's mm. what, well over a hundred kids. So you can tell that there's a big, I guess, family feel that the kids experience, not just the staff, not just the kids, but sort of the whole group of people. It's all one piece. And so I think that's a really important thing to understand that your child may be maybe homesick. In my case, she was not. We picked her up. The first thing out of her mouth was, I wasn't homesick at all. <laughs> I was like, well then. <laughs> and then of course she told me that this girl was and that girl was, but she was not. So I think it, it depends a lot on your child, but we had kind of conversations before she went out that this is how it's going to be. So I think a lot of that preparing us was really helpful. Um, and so I, I, I like that feeling that we can't really create that for us for our child and our family. And that makes me think that with the way the program is seven weeks and you're taking um, a child and whatever the age range is out of their normal environment, out of their normal supports, because you're not leaving them unsupported, right. but you're getting them away from what they consider to be their usual. And whenever human beings are placed out of their usual, we have an opportunity to grow. We have an opportunity to gain confidence. We have an opportunity to figure out that, hey, we could do more than we thought we could do because we have to do it differently because we're out of our norm. Mm -hmm. Is that part of what Baycliffe is, is about as well? Well, I think so. I think that, you know, we all grow when we're faced with new opportunities. I mean, that is, I, you know, I know for myself personally, my greatest learning has happened in my times of greatest need. And so when, when you're confronted or you're given the opportunity to encounter even challenges that may be similar, 
in, in your home environment, um, it's with new people. It's which mm -hmm. often pushes you to think about new ways of potentially navigating that situation. And you have this, you know, I'm so pleased to hear that Sandy talked about the family environment that we have because it's something that, you know, during orientation, that's what I keep telling our staff and a lot of our staff returns year after year. But there is nothing that is more important than for that child to feel like they are part of something very, very important. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that their contributions are meaningful and significant. Their individual contributions are meaningful and significant. And so, you know, to hear her say that is real affirming to me in that, you know, not only do we know their names, we know their likes and dislikes. We, we know, um, we know their behavior when they'd rather not go to therapy and work really hard. Um, you know, we know their behavior and, and how much, how important it's going to be to celebrate their successes because we know what their goals are because we talk to them about it. And, and while that differs a little bit because we have ages three through 17, which wow. is a huge age range, um, to watch children literally grow up at Baycliffe mm -hmm. from year to year to year is, is I mean, I, I can't even describe it. I'm relatively new to this position. This is my second year at Baycliffe. And I, I just, I mean, words will fail to express how much these kids have taught me about myself and, and where I needed to grow. And because they are, um, they're just these remarkable contributing folks with, with just these wonderful insights on the world. And it, you know, I'm just, I'm blessed to be here. Blessed to be here. Thanks. I think one of the things, yeah, one of the things that also is really helpful is Baycliffe is not just physically set up, but the pacing is set up to support these kids, to be at their pacing. I often think about how, like in the mornings here on a, on a school day, um, my daughter's capable of doing a lot of things for herself, but there can be some variation in how long it takes on that day. And that bus is still coming at eight o'clock. That's when that bus comes and that school starts at 830. And so she's got to be on that bus. She's got to be ready. And so if she's struggling a little bit with something, we might have to take over um, because it just has to happen. The world, our world that we typically live in on a daily basis is not set up for a kid like her. We tried to modify what we can. We try to work with it. But Baycliffe is set up for these kids to have the opportunities day after day to work on the skills so that when she comes home at, after seven weeks, the first year she came home able to do things, I was like, you can do that? <laughs> you know, I didn't know. And it's because you guys set it up so well that they have seven weeks of opportunities to practice things at the pace they need with the supports they need that we can't provide because life here happens as it has to happen and they have to fit into it. Baycliffe fits around the kids. And I think that's a really important distinction. And that's why she has done such a great job there and feels like for her, it's, it's kind of a summer vacation, but it's work. And she sees the progress and she sees what happens and she loves it. So her big thing this summer is like, she keeps talking about things like, I want to work on these goals because I don't have Baycliffe to work on them at. I want to work on these things. So how can we have Baycliffe at home? It's that important to her that she wants to keep doing the benefit of Baycliffe, even though she's not physically there. And that's why it's important to us that you're doing the virtual camp. Which brings us to- really funny ways to do that. Uh, which brings us to the fact that, okay, now we have this uh, idyllic setting that makes people cry, which is always a sign of a good thing, right? Um, you know, if you can make them cry. That's right. Um, you know, this sounds wonderful. And then we get hit with COVID. And I'm sure you went through yes, no's, yes, we can do this, we can do it this way, we can't do it this way, maybe we can do it this way, maybe, until you finally came to this decision that you're not going to be able to have campers on site. But yet, you want your campers to still experience base level. So what sort of things have you adapted? What do you have planned for the summer, Claire? So when, when the very, and it was such a difficult decision, I mean, we just, 
agonized over it. The idea that we wouldn't have camp, I mean, this would have been our 88th summer. And the idea that we wouldn't have camp was just, I mean, we were, we were literally almost paralyzed by that notion. How can this be? We've got all our staff hired. We, you know, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. And we have the space. We have this gorgeous camp. Right. And so, um, and we rely so heavily on that, that person to person interaction. That's just such an essential part of our work. And so, you know, once the board voted and, you know, I meant the, the staff, I got them all together and I said, well, I got them together virtually. And I said, you know, um, okay, so we're all gonna take two days to really mourn this loss and to really feel bad and, and be disappointed and heart sick about it. And then we're all gonna come back again and we're gonna start looking at, okay, we know what we can't do, what can we do? Because I told them, I said, we still have Bay Cliff campers. This did not change that, which means there's work to be done. So we're gonna start talking about what can we do. Um, Bay Cliff is not technologically um, advanced. We don't have all of the cool gadgets. We piece and parcel everything together. Um, and so the idea that we would look at a virtual experience um, was pretty daunting in the sense that we weren't even certain we had the tools, much less the individual capacity to do something like this. Sure. But looking at, well, what, are, what, what is it exactly we want to accomplish? Because it's more than just doing something. And our commitment was, we need to make sure that just like we do when our kids are here, our goal is you are important. You are part of something very significant. And so our goal all along has been to accomplish that from a distance. And so once we kind of adopted this notion of 2020 is the year that Bay Cliff comes to your house, we come to your house in 2020. And we have, and I don't really wanna spoil it because I've got a camper's parent on you know in the meeting and I want her to be equally as surprised. But Cindy, I gotta tell you, we've done some pretty amazing things. And we have 49 days worth of um opportunities and challenges and you know just things that are gonna spark a kid's interest and keep them looking towards 2021 when we can all be together again. Um, you know, and I think we're going to, at every child is going to know us. Every child that participates is going to know one another. They are all going to feel like Baycliff Bay Cliff is part of who I am. And we are certainly, we only exist because of them. And so they will, they will know they're loved and they're cared for. And they will know that you're gonna be able to tell we did our very best, but just like when they're here physically, there's times when we go, okay, time out, do over, do over. And we left that kind of stuff in. You know, you, you plan to go to the beach and it rains. <laughs> you know, you've got the big bonfire and the big s'more challenge ready, and then a fire ban happens. And so those things happened in virtual camp too, and we left them in. Sure. And um, because if our kids have taught us anything, it's you, you just don't let barriers get in your way. You just don't. Yeah. You just I, figure it out. You figure it out. So, and, and I love that. That's fantastic. Go, go ahead. Opening day is going to be June 20th. And um, we've got our opening video that is going to start from the far entrance of the camp. And it's going to represent the way that kids come in and register. And um, they will hear us cheering and calling their names and, oh, and wishing them the very best summer ever. Oh. And we will go straight through till closing fire when we get together and we sing songs and we talk about what we're going to do till we can get together again. 
So I don't imagine you're going to be doing this, you know, streaming 24 hours a day. Um, you know, follow a camp around. This is what it looks like when we sleep. <laughs> but no. I, I, I also know that you're still focused on therapy. Is that we is are. That something to give? You know, oh, here's something to do this summer. No, this is something that I can't remember who told me that it, it's not. It, it's not enough to just maintain over the summer. It's, we want to grow over right. the summer. And so you have some things in mind for therapy We as have well. some things that I think families are going to find to be very valuable. Um, you know, we have, we have just this unbelievable seasonal staff. And the kids are going to see all of, I mean, the counselors that were hired did videos. The therapists that the kids have had for years, they're going to see them again. Um, and so we've got, because we know our kids, we knew what kinds of things would be the most valuable to them. Now, obviously, we don't have the latitude to do real, you know, extensive things because we don't have a licensed therapist right there next to them to help them mm -hmm. do that. But we're going to focus on movement. We're going to focus on strength. We're going to focus on flexibility. And there will be a whole menu of things that people can choose from that are going to be best aligned for what their needs are. Um, and I think that's going to be valuable for our families too. We're trying to keep it simple. Um, we're minimizing screen time. That was never mm -hmm. our goal. It's going to be, look at us, look at us doing this. You go do it and send it back to us. And then we'll talk about it. Oh, and I like I, that and send it back to you. So you're looking yeah. for that interaction still. And like I said, the stuff that we've received from kids, we we did a practice run of them sending us their intro videos. We all did one. And they're just, I mean, every time one comes in, because we're all working in isolation in our offices, but I will hear someone squeal from another office and I will know, <laughs> oh, they just watched so-and-so's video. Because <laughs> it's just, I mean, we, um, we absolutely adore these children. And so to see their faces and to hear their voices and See what they're doing and um you know and regardless of how they're communicating with us it's um it's just an absolute delight so lauren did her video yeah. last night and we got to use it as a therapeutic experience because she did her video and then she watched it and she said and you know and i said do you think they could hear you well enough and she said yes but they couldn't see me and i said oh well, why do you think that is and she said because i was leaning and we've been working on sitting up straight. And I was like, well, here's an opportunity. So now watch yourself, right? And, and remember how you can see yourself and make sure that you're in the right spot. And then you can watch the video and see if you achieved that. So it was, it was kind of fun. That's like, we're, we're doing Baycliffe for minute one. <laughs> and she's getting that feedback and she's getting that, you know, and it was just, it was really neat for her to hear herself. And at one part she's like, Maybe I was too quiet there. And I was like, good. You know, so she's getting to also self-assess rather than always get feedback from others. So that's another skill she's starting to learn is to think through how do I think I'm doing versus always saying, okay, adult, how did I do? Or therapist or counselor. So it's pretty exciting to see all of a sudden starting to get that. And then today they went to Walmart to get some of the supplies. Oh. So that was an outing she had to do, and they did a little work on it. Well, the gift card has $25 on it, so there's some leftover. How do you want to do that? What do you think you mm. want? you get to practice some kind of, you know, math skills and budgeting skills and some fun stuff. Fantastic, because, I mean, what you're talking about is life skills. Mm -hmm. And that whole sense of knowing, knowing who I am, knowing my strengths, and also knowing those areas that I want to work on. I mean, that's everybody. Everybody has those things. We all have our strengths. We all have areas that we want to work on. Being able to identify them and identify ways that we can help ourselves. We can help ourselves be better. We can help ourselves feel better. We can help ourselves think better um, is such a valuable life skill. So that sounds really cool that you guys are incorporating that as well. Um, well, and when we, when we, when we were coming up with the supply list that we would need that to get us through about half of the summer, you know, it was like, okay, are we mailing things to people? Cause of course access to resources is so important to us. And then I was like, 
a gift card. Then every family can just go get what they need off that list or not. Right. And, um, but again, the opportunity for the camper to play a part in that mm -hmm. is, is mm -hmm. just a really, really cool thing. You know, I'm Sandy, I'm listening to you talk. And of course, you know, knowing your daughter, because she is, um, she is willful. Uh, she is goal oriented. Uh -huh. and, um, and so, you know, and a very, very hard worker. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just so excited that she's stepping into this experience just all the way. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's exactly what we hoped for. That's yeah. exactly what we hoped for. Yeah, Baker oh. gives her a fun way to be her goal directed. So. <laughs> they remind her to do it in a fun way. <laughs> yeah. But absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Which again, if I could figure out if I could figure out how to exercise regularly in a way that was fun for me, I'd probably do it more. So, right. You know, it's a great life skill to figure out when you're a kid. Uh, so Claire, this is sounding all really cool and you know, let's say somebody dumps aren't tonight, so excited, they listen to this, this webcast, whatever the heck we're calling it, this, this shindig that we have going on here. And they're just like, ah, oh, I had no idea this existed. Is there any opportunity for parents to take advantage of the virtual camp at the summer? There is, and you know, it was a little challenging on, you know, well, how do we make folks aware um, so, you know, where we started in, in looking at the list of, of kids that we would actively, you know, invite and recruit, we looked at all of the campers who were currently in the application process for this summer. And there was about 143 of them that were already in process with their paperwork. And then there was probably about another 30 or so that, um, that we knew just from past experience, we're gonna get that in right under the wire. And so yep. we let them, we were, they were available too. So because of, you know, there really is no limits on, you know, a, a capacity or an access issue other than the technology side um, for campers. If there's someone who's interested, it doesn't mean that they would necessarily um, be eligible to attend Bay Cliffs physical camp right. because there is, you know, obviously we do a lot of work with, with educators, therapists, physicians, you know, it's an outdoor camp experience and, and campers need to have, um, you know, the ability to navigate that safely. And we always want it to be enjoyable. It's, it's a, it's camp. It's camp with all of the all of the flexibility that is necessary to to do that in a camp environment. Um, you know, it's pretty fluid sometimes. So, but if there are people who are interested, we certainly would like to include and touch as many kids as we can. So they can go to our website, which is www.baycliff.org, um, or um, they can give us a call at nine zero six. Three four five nine three one four. Um, we can get a registration packet out. It's literally that easy. People do not have to join at the very beginning and be there for the whole seven weeks. Um, I would anticipate that some families are really going to take advantage of this extra time with their kids unexpectedly this summer. Um, so we will be posting content on Sunday nights for the whole week, and then it would be available. So if you were oh. traveling away for a week or whatever, or you missed several days, you can, you can access that part of it anytime you want to. You can even do it more than once. You know, if there's a movement activity that you found to be particularly engaging or, you know, chair yoga, and you want to do it every day, you could go into that activity every day. And, um, and then at the end of that seven weeks, there's going to be seven full weeks of content that would be available for our kids to continue to access. So if there's families who are interested, please contact us. We will do what we can to get you hooked up. And it's not necessary that all of that happens before June 20th. But that is okay, open three days. Day. They have <laughs> but, right, but, but, but you don't want to be opening ceremony. 
That right, is when the opening ceremony is happening. Yes. So let's talk for a, a few minutes here about, you know, families that maybe, you know, are not into the camping or their kids aren't into the camping, um, but their, their summer's going to be radically different as well. Correct. So based on what you as a parent, Sandy, have learned and Claire working with campers and these kids and families, do you have any ideas, tips, things for families to think about? as they approach this really strange summer of 2020. We are looking at ways to still have some structure um, because we know that Lauren does best the structure. She gets really anxious if she doesn't kind of know somewhat of a plan. And that's one of the things that they is really helpful with. So it's really nice to know that things are being released on Sunday. So we can look at that and kind of figure out our own structure. She's found a couple of other opportunities that it, it, it's kind of a neat situation for us this year because there's something that happens that she's not in, in Madison where we saw never been able to do because we didn't know about it until it was too late. And it would have had to be choosing between that or Baycliff in this year. And we didn't want to make that choice. So this year she's getting to do that in its also virtual way. <laughs> But we didn't have to pick and choose again because how Bay Club is doing it is here's the stuff, you figure out what it fits for you versus the other thing is 10 o'clock, Tuesdays and Thursdays, she has a Zoom call for us. So that allows us to create a structure again that supports her needs versus putting into an arbitrary structure of timing. Um, so I really think figuring out how to pace things for the child um, in the context of other pieces is really important so that it, it then feels like it's about that. <laughs> I have to fill your time because I don't know what else to do with you. Like, I fill it with but I, I, I like that idea of a structure because it, it then also goes back to the structure is built around what your goals are. You know, if our, our we, we set some goals, this is what I want to accomplish. By the end of the summer, I want to be here or I want to learn this or I want to do this. And so that structure helps support those goals. So I think that whole goal setting yeah. is also really important. Yeah. Well, and I think, and now I don't even have to say anything because the two of you have, have shared the two <laughs> things that I think are the most essential just with children in general. Talk to your kids about setting goals for themselves and then be the thorn in their side that holds them to it. Mm -hmm. And, and talk to them about if, if gains are not being made, then what changes need to happen or what do you think that mm -hmm. is? Is it, is it that maybe um, you're kind of losing interest or those routines aren't in place or maybe they're the wrong goals. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe they're yeah. just the wrong goals for you for right now. But to have those really intentional conversations during the summer and while you don't want to make routines so rigid that it's disruptive when they don't happen, but every child benefits from a routine every child and there's nothing better when you're talking about expectations and goal setting than to make sure that there's this structure in place that makes that much more likely to be successful than if it didn't exist otherwise a goal to me is just kind of wishful thinking and um mm -hmm. and there's a difference there's a difference you know hoping for something is great but having a plan to achieve it is really, really wonderful. I mean, that means your hopes and dreams are likely to come true. Well, and Baycliff is very clear that the children that will benefit from Baycliff are those who can participate in developing and working towards their goals. They're very clear this is not a seven week babysitting situation. This is, you're gonna work collaboratively to establish and work towards your goals. And so I think that that process, I mean, you know, on opening day, we meet with the, ther the family and the child, the therapist all meet together and discuss goals for the child so that it's a collaborative approach. It's not, you know, the parents share what they think would be appropriate goals and the, the therapists through the school have, and as part of the, the application process have filled out where this child is at from their perspective and maybe what some goals would be. So there's a thought process that goes into that goal that evaluates from multiple perspectives and then kind of collaboratively reaches some of the goals. And I think that helps ensure that the child is motivated for it. And then it provides more eyes on how can we work 
there? How can we support the child to get there? Um, so that I think there's a higher likelihood of success in the goals and buy-in and mm -hmm. needed supports. And then it also encourages the process of, well, okay, we can talk if it's not working. You know, we can have that check-in process. And again, that's a developmental skill. That's something that as an adult, you need to be able to do. <laughs> and so by having the kids learn that year after year as they go through this, that's gonna be a more solid skill when they're done with Baycliff. So it's not just a, this is this year's process. It's, it's, it's a life skill that's also being taught. Well, and also going back to something you said earlier, Sandy, and that, that Claire, you alluded to, um, is the fact that, that some of this does involve that goal setting, that um, helping people push themselves a little bit harder. Is there's, there's a certain set of family involvement that could happen this summer in, in a way that it can't happen mm -hmm. during the school year because of, Sandy, what you were saying about the way that life is structured and that there's those times where it's just like, okay, if they just had 10 more minutes, I know they could get this, but they don't have those 10 minutes because they've got to get to school or they've got to get to the next class. So I'm, what I'm hearing is this, the sense of now sort of this time to challenge your kiddo in a little, to, to, to challenge them, to give them the opportunity to succeed when time is not necessarily the factor. Give them more opportunities to, if they fail, to redo it. Mm -hmm. And if they make a mistake, it's not going to last with them for the rest of the day. They can redo it. They can try it again right then. They don't have to wait till the next therapy session. Right there for them. If you didn't like the way it went, do it again. Do it until you feel confident with it. Mm -hmm. This whole idea of having the space to succeed also means having the space to fail. And a lot of times with our kiddos with disabilities, we shy away from that failure. We shy away from wanting them to fail, want everything to go perfectly well. That ain't life. Is we need to learn how to bounce back. Don't go our way. Um, so that just from talking to you guys, I just think that that's a really cool part of what the summer can be about as well. It takes time to struggle. Yes. Yeah. Struggle is time consuming and incredibly valuable, incredibly mm -hmm. valuable. But it's also valuable to have people who know you, care about you, mm -hmm. to know when, um, when to step in. Because um, you, don't want, you don't want the struggle to be debilitating with respect to their ability to continue to see that they're moving forward. Um, and, and I think that being able to kind of discern when to step in, when to kind of hold back, um, requires that you really know the camper, that you really know them well, um, and that you know that they didn't sleep particularly well the night before, or um, it's really hot outside and they've had a long day and maybe today's not the day that you bring that up. Um, <laughs> save it for another time. Mm -hmm. you know, nothing is, you know, and that's one of the things that I think we were most concerned about with the virtual experience is our work is so individualized and so relational. And it is with the kids with one another, the, mm -hmm. what they learn from their mm -hmm. peers. And so we're, you know, we know that there is no way for us to reproduce that. Um, but I do think we are, we are going to be able to ensure that those feelings of isolation that a lot of people, everybody really, is kind of experiencing mm -hmm. now. Um, I, I think we're going to hit a pretty sweet spot with that. I think we will. I think we will. That sounds fantastic. Uh, what well, we are running against the clock a little bit here today. Um, and so any final words that either of you would like to say about this COVID summer of 2020, the summer of success, of challenge, of successful challenges, anything else that you would like to say today? You know, I just, again, I just want to say thank you. And um, to both of you, Tim, for giving me the opportunity and, um, you know, Sandy, for sharing your daughter with us. Thank you. Thank you. It's a real blessing.
It is well worth the power drive. <laughs> well, and I, I, hope, I hope someday when Fisco Camp is up and running to actually come and um, see a clip and experience that. a little bit of a clip. I'd love to come and see what it's all about. It's um, beautiful up there. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Now, there is a hotel nearby with a hot tub, though, right? Uh, no, but there is a hotel near a really big lake. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it a hot tub, mm -hmm. but it is a really big, beautiful lake. Okay. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it's almost like 63 degrees. <laughs> well, now, how could I, how could I resist on that? On a good day. Uh, right, how could I, oh, I'm there. I am so there. Sign me up. Um, hopefully, I will be able to meet you in person in the summer of 21. That would People, be wonderful. so much for being here today. Um, we will get this posted. And um, Claire, if you wouldn't mind, just so I have it at my hands, if you could send me that phone number and the website, and then I can put it into the um, YouTube blurb so that people can contact you if okay. they're watching the video. Sure, happy to do that. All right, thank, thank you all very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.